Hello, my name is Paul Hegedus, and I'm going to be sharing results from a project where Bruce Maxwell and I assess the spatiotemporal variation in crop responses and drivers of crop responses and net return in fields of Montana. We selected fields from the on-farm precision experiment project out of Montana State University, where we selected fields from two farms in northern Montana and one field from southern Montana. We selected fields from which we had at least one year of on-farm experimentation where we varied nitrogen fertilizer rates across the field. All of these fields were conventionally managed small grain, dry land agroecosystems. To assess the spatiotemporal variation in crop responses, we used a probabilistic approach um, using a Monte Carlo simulation where we compared the distribution of crop responses, either yield or protein, for a given year and field combination to three different distributions. The first being uh, the crop response distribution from the same field for all other years. Um, the second being the crop response distribution from all other fields of the same farm for the given year. And third, uh, crop response distribution for fields of different farms um, for the same year. And as you can see, there's large variation in all of these comparisons um, indicating that we have variation in space and time of both yield and protein, indicating that it varies whether you have a higher or lower crop response um, across time for a given field um, and across space. We see, to a lesser extent, differences between fields of the same farm compared to fields of the different farms, um, as well as a larger um, differences between crop response distributions for the um, for a given field across years, indicating that temporal variation is slightly greater than spatial variation in regard to yield and protein. We fit generalized additive models for yield and protein for each field um, and calculated net return for each field and year combination. Uh, we performed a sensitivity analysis in which we varied the covariate values by plus or minus 10% and predicted the response um, to assess which parameter had the largest influence on the crop response or net return. On the y-axis of these figures, we have the frequency with the height of the bars indicating the number of years that we have data for, while on the x-axis we have the field. We see that there's the least amount of variation in the drivers of yield, um, where elevation had the most influence on yield for most farms. Um, and this is likely due to the crop rotation and crop management history of a field, where if previous crops were peas or alfalfa, um, nitrogen could be added to the soil, um, as well as if there was over-application of nitrogen fertilizer in the past, also increasing the amount of nitrogen in the soil. Both of these conditions would contribute to less of an effect of nitrogen on yield, um, leaving topographic variables such as elevation uh, which influence the availability and movement of nitrogen uh, to influence yield. We see more variation in protein and net return, uh, where we see variation in the drivers across space between fields of the same farm, um, as well as across time, where we see drivers changing for a given field um, across time. Um, most notably in the net return analysis, we noticed that base price had uh, the largest influence on farmer net returns, um, indicating that the parameter that most influences the profit that a farmer makes is a variable that the farmer cannot control, um, as base price is set by the grain elevator um, that the farmer sells their grain to. These results indicate that there is variation in space and time of crop responses and the major drivers of crop responses and net returns. And while variation differs for different fields and farms, the scale at which management decisions um, are made cannot be identified without on-farm experimentation, and the variation in crop responses and drivers across space indicate that recommendations from small plot research trials extrapolated across agricultural regions may not be as appropriate as on-farm experimentation and adaptive management approaches. Thank you, and I'd like to um, acknowledge the uh, funders of this project um, and further collaborators. Thank you.